It's believed that actress Winona Ryder owns a Mediterranean villa in the celebrity-filled Outpost Estates neighborhood of Los Angeles, nestled in the hills above Hollywood. While she keeps this home quite private, it's said she paid $2.2 million for it back in 2016, and it's said to cover two floors and over 2,000 square feet of space. The actress's backyard boasts an oval-shaped swimming pool, and a unique feature of the property is that it has no neighbors on either side for the ultimate privacy. It's on a peninsula surrounded by road on three sides and open land on the other. While it's thought that Winona lives most of her time in Los Angeles, the actress has also owned stunning properties in New York City as well as San Francisco over the years. Winona Ryder, born in 1971 in Olmsted County, Minnesota, is an American actress known for her versatile performances in film and TV. Growing up in a creative household, Ryder's early life was influenced by her parents, Michael Horowitz, an author, editor, and publisher, and Cynthia Palmer, a video producer and editor. She was named after the city of Winona, Minnesota, where she was born. Ryder's interest in acting blossomed at a young age, and she made her film debut in the coming-of-age drama Lucas at the age of 15. She gained widespread recognition for her roles in films like Beetlejuice, Heathers, and Edward Scissorhands, establishing herself as one of the leading actresses of her generation. In addition to her acting career, Ryder has been known for her unique sense of style and her influence on fashion trends throughout the 1990s. Her pixie haircut and edgy alternative fashion choices made her a cultural icon during those times. Despite her success in Hollywood, Ryder has maintained a relatively private personal life. She's been romantically linked to several high-profile figures in the past, such as Johnny Depp and Matt Damon, but she prefers to keep her relationships out of the spotlight. As for her home life, Winona Ryder has kept details about her personal residences largely confidential too. Like many celebrities, she values her privacy and prefers to keep her home life out of the public eye. However, it is known that she resides in various locations, including Los Angeles and New York City, depending on her work commitments and her personal preferences. Back in 2020, Renona Ryder listed a home she owned in San Francisco for 25 years. This classic Dutch colonial abode was listed at $4.9 million while she purchased it way back in 1995 for $1.3 million. Located in the Cow Hollow neighborhood, the Victorian home was built back in 1902 and modernized plenty since to feature all the present day creature comforts you need. Cow Hollow is one of the most affluent neighborhoods in San Francisco and Winona's three level home boasted 3,140 square feet of space with three bedrooms, two full baths and two half baths. While they updated the home throughout, it was still able to maintain the period details of the original residence from years ago. Situated on a high spot of the exclusive neighborhood, the property borders Marina District to the north and the posh Pacific Heights to the south. A gated courtyard leads you to the side of the home where a cherry red front door is located. This opens to a foyer where there are original hardwood floors, leaded glass windows, and a switchback staircase with decorative spindles. Nearby, you'll see a formal sitting room which faces the street via more leaded windows as well as a traditional fireplace, while the second and more casual living room boasts a nearly identical fireplace. The sunlit main level also boasts a dining room which is attached to the living area and this space opens through glass sliders to a deck with amazing view over the bay. You can see all the way towards Angel Island State Park from here, and it serves as a great option to dine al fresco. The modestly sized but well-arranged kitchen is stocked with designer stainless appliances, light gray quartz counters, and glass fronted cabinets. There are three bedrooms on the upper floor of the home, but plans show that one includes a large vintage inspired private bath while the other two can function as a grand suite. The grand suite is made up of a shared entranceway or mini hallway, which branches off to a walk-in closet and another vintage style bath. The bigger of the suite's two rooms boasts a fireplace that resembles a French chateau, while both rooms offer glass doors opening to views over the bay, even showing famous landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz Island. The lower level is home to a laundry room, bonus space with powder room, the garage, and a media room that opens to the backyard, considering its ground level. 
not an actual basement. While outdoor space is pretty limited in San Francisco, Winona's former home boasts a large brick terrace, a small deck hidden in the trees, and a lush garden, all within a deep backyard. While Winona owned the home for so many years, it's not clear when she last occupied it. It popped up for rent a year before selling at $15,000 per month, and it seems as though it had been cleared of personal belongings and staged with more generic furniture. While it flew under the radar and went down in a discreet deal, it was reported that Winona also dropped $2.2 million through a blind trust for a home in Hollywood back in 2016 and appears that she still owns it. Winona's home here is perched near the top of the Outpost Estates neighborhood in the east area of the Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles, which is a celeb-packed area. Not to mention it's only a five-minute drive to Hollywood and popular hiking spot Runyon Canyon. The two-story abode is built in a Mediterranean style and was constructed back in 1947, spanning 2,154 square feet. There's a gated entryway out front with brick courtyard and foundation, and on one side, a two-car garage. Meanwhile, the backyard of Winona's home has an oval-shaped swimming pool. A unique feature of this home is that it has no neighbors. This home has the ultimate privacy. It's on a peninsula surrounded by road on three sides and open land on the other. Inside the home, there are some elegant and vintage details like the intricate chandeliers in nearly every common room. The kitchen and family room are constructed in open plan like a grand living area with the high wood ceiling overhead, and there's also a fireplace. The attached kitchen boasts stainless steel appliances and a bar which overlooks the sitting area, while there are also French doors leading outside. There's another living room with fireplace nearby and a cozy sized dining room, as well as three bedrooms, one of which is located on the ground floor. It's also believed that Winona still owns her two other homes, which were previously featured in Architectural Digest, one in New York City and the other in Beverly Hills. In New York City, she has a sophisticated apartment with high ceilings in a reported landmark downtown building while her spread in LA is a modest-sized 1920s Mediterranean bungalow in Beverly Hills. From her feature in Architectural Digest, we can see Winona's homes at the time were feminine and charming. She drew help from her friend Kevin Haley, an actor who's also dabbled in decorating. Her 1920s home was stripped of its original Mediterranean charm by an upgrade, and Winona didn't love it. She and Kevin worked on restoring the home as close as possible to its original, having the orange stained ceiling sandblast blasted from the timbered ceiling and saved wrought iron hardware and curtain rods. The tiny patio and sloped backyard was also transformed into a romantic garden. The first piece purchased for the home that started the theme for the design was a 19th century chandelier with amethyst crystal drops located in the dining room. There were more jewel toned accents added in the living room and other spaces to blend like the velvet chairs. The living room is comfortable and informal, which is what Winona wanted for entertaining, while the entry hall had limestone pavers and a sweeping staircase. Haley turned a small space upstairs into an open dressing room for Winona with whimsical lace pattern glass doors and a mirror dating back to the 1940s. Her master suite was covered in a color palette of soft tones. Winona said about this home, I can't stand houses where you're afraid to touch anything. There's an authenticity about everything in this house. Anybody would be comfortable here. The back garden was also entirely landscaped with sandstone, river rock, and lush plants. In contrast to Winona's Beverly Hills home, the New York City apartment was created in a totally different mood. Haley said of decorating this spot, the word that came to mind was glamour. The soaring 18 foot high ceilings and tall windows to match gave the space an urban and classy feel. The living room was decorated with lacquer panels from the 1930s Manhattan Dance Club. Winona also was a love for music, which we could see in the Italian bar decorated with lutes and a violin. In the dining room and bedrooms, there's a mix of contemporary furniture and pieces from the 1930s and 1940s. As we can see after looking at her homes, Winona Ryder's properties reflect her diverse taste and appreciation for both historical charm and modern elegance. From her main Mediterranean villa in Los Angeles to her sophisticated apartment with lofty ceilings in New York, her homes show her eye for design and commitment to preserving architectural heritage. Before we go, answer this question for me. Which part of a home would be the most important for you to preserve the history of? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications. I'm Kara and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.
Hey everyone, it's Kara, or Kara the Vampire Slayer as you might know me, and given my love for all things house and home, I recently wanted to get more hands on myself, and I started tackling DIY projects at my own house. Being a new homeowner, there are plenty of unexpected things to fix, and it's cool to learn what you're doing and hopefully be able to fix it yourself. There are also plenty of DIY projects suitable for beginners like me to do and ones that improve the look of your space drastically. Follow me and I'll teach you what I'm learning and motivate you to join me. You can DIY on a budget even if you're a total beginner. Follow me on Fix It With Kara and we can chat.